66 degrees. There are a number of reality shows on television today whose premise is to take something that is less desirable and to make it more desirable. Oftentimes these programs are marketed along the line of an extreme home makeover or perhaps its focus may be upon improving the appearance or of a man or a woman by bringing in experts in order to provide beauty and health tips. You see the whole idea behind a makeover program is to impress the viewer with what can be done with just a little bit of work and effort. Well our program today might be described as a makeover for fathers. But we're not concerned with the outward appearance of the man that we call dad, but we do want to address in our program today the heart and character of those who are our fathers. And so if you are a father, have a father, or hope to be one one day, then stay with us and we'll be back in just a moment to begin our program. In him, all families are blessed. Discussion on Fabric of Family. The story is told of an eagle that was flying over a river in the wintertime. And this eagle notices that there's a chunk of ice floating down the river with a half eaten salmon on it. Well, rather than just swooping down and picking up the salmon and flying away to safety, the eagle flies down, lands on the floating ice and begins taking his time while he's eating his meal. Now the only problem with this is that there's a waterfall ahead. A waterfall where the ice chunk is going to eventually go over the side. But the eagle is thinking to himself that he's got lots of time to fly away and so he just continues to eat his meal. Closer and closer the waterfall comes and the eagle continues to think that he can fly away at the last moment and go, go away unscathed. When the miniature ice barge was only a few feet away from the waterfall, the eagle spreads his wings and tries to fly. But you see, he could not move because his talons... YouTube TV, now, live, the Fortner Focus. As a result, Watch now on Fox News, attachment, the waterfall, selected, so does screen the recording, falling button. To his death. You know, that is pretty much an accurate picture of American fatherhood today. Too many fathers are seemingly content to rest on the ice block thinking that at the very last moment they can spread their wings and be the kind of fathers that they know that they should be. However, one of the problems we fathers face when we become negligent in our responsibilities is that we set in motion a cycle of neglect that is so oftentimes repeated by our children when they're grown themselves. Sadly, too many fathers have little to look back upon after their kids are grown, except maybe a, a life of regret of what could have been, oh, if they had just been willing to accept their responsibility in the home. Certainly there's not a father watching this program today who would want this sad scenario to be lived out in their own life, yet the likelihood is that there may be someone viewing this broadcast that is living out today this very scenario, failing to be that father with a faith of steel that their family so desperately needs and deserves. If you are a father and you want your faith to be likened unto steel, to help yourself and your family to stand the test of time, then this program is especially for you. YouTube TV, now, live, ABC News Live, watch now on ABC News Live, attachment. So we're talking today about our, our lives and our family lives. We're talking about keeping them God-centered. And Johnny, what are some things that provide a God-centered personal life? Well, I think uh, maybe one of the, the most important components uh, of a God-centered life is uh, doing uh, as, as Christ would and, and living Christ-like. We are supposed to observe Christ's commandment that the first commandment was that we were supposed to love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and being. So that's the first thing that we got to do. The word Christian uh, means to be Christ-like. We must make a decision to follow Christ. In fact, he said whoever wills to do the will of God must follow him that must be, that means there must be a desire to follow Christ in my personal life uh, obey what the word says and uh, by doing that uh, of course you'll live a God-centered life 
It's time for our discussion today, and I have with me uh, two men. They've never been on our, our program before, and I'm just delighted to have uh, both of these gentlemen with us, uh, Charles Abernathy and also Barry Binion. And uh, since this is their first time on Fabric of Family, I just want to give them the opportunity to introduce themselves and tell us anything they, they want. Charles? Well, Barry, I've been in the Florence area. Uh, this June will be my eighth year. Uh, minister for the Chisholm Hills Church of Christ and uh, have enjoyed uh, every moment of my work. I have uh, a beautiful wife, Christy, uh, who works at Mars Hill Bible School, and uh, I have a son who is in his first year at the University of North Alabama and three uh, other kids in, in uh, high school and middle school, so uh, we sort of have our hands full. Well, you're like me. You've got uh, a membership in the Four Kid Club. Uh, Jody and I, my wife, we have uh, four children as well, and so I guess we're kind of at that same stage of life. I've got one getting ready to uh, to start college, two two boys that are already uh, out and married themselves. But uh, Charles, it's it's great to have you with us. Been wanting to, to have you on Fabric of Family for a while, and I'm glad you could, could be with us for this program. Well, thank you, and we appreciate what you're doing with this program and with trying to help us with families. Well, thank you, Charles. Also, Barry. Barry Binion is here. Barry, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I haven't been in Florence as long as Charles, but uh, I've started my third year at the Florence Boulevard Church of Christ, working with the young people there, and it's uh, been a good work. Um, my wife and I, we have three boys, um, uh, all which, uh, one in high school, one in middle school, and one in elementary school, all at Mars Hill. So uh, we've uh, enjoyed our time there and enjoy uh, working with the church and, and especially families uh, because we've seen the need to need uh, help and encouragement ourselves as well as uh, helping other families because it's, it's, it's not easy raising kids as, as you all know. Uh, I'm just in the three member club. <laughs> <laughs> There's still time. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I appreciate Barry being with us. I've known Barry for a number of years. In fact, our first association goes back to a former congregation that uh, I preached for for about 13 years, the Highland Church of Christ in Dalton, Georgia. And, uh, Barry Wi-Fi. had uh, come out and uh, been an intern for uh, a few years for the youth and did a great job, and he has just continued to progress and do many great things. And uh, Barry, I appreciate you coming and being with us today. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and get right into our discussion for today. We're talking about fathers with a faith of steel. You know, there are so many different ideas out there in the world today about strength and what constitutes strength. Uh, What do you think that uh, many people think of when they think of strong fathers today? I personally think that, that when folks think about, you know, their dad, they think about fathers in general. Uh... They don't cry. Uh, They're very strong. Uh, A lot of times uh, you don't hear a lot of I love you. And I think that 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 image of just being the the strong, stern, you know, even at times abrasive father uh, is is an image that 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 is there. That's what I think is portrayed as as being strength in the home. Just just don't cry. I think that's so true. We, we have this, this idea of what a real man is and, and what it means to be strong. And uh, sometimes uh, even those who would uh, claim to follow after principles of truth, the Bible, uh, sometimes maybe we don't get our ideas from uh, the Scriptures as far as what it means to be uh, really a, a man of strength. Uh, Barry, what's your thoughts about that as far as uh, the concept that is out there today regarding a strong father versus what the Bible really teaches? Um, The thought that comes to my mind is, it's kind of funny, but I remember growing up as a child and especially among young boys, you get aggravated at one another and you always make that comment, well, my dad can beat up your dad. And so it goes along with that idea that society has always had the thought that a strong dad is the one that that, uh, is strong physically, uh, can take care of those uh, physical things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think like Charles too, that lends itself to no crying, not really saying I love you as much, and things like that. Well, you know, when the the Bible talks about faith, what are we really talking about? Because our program today is talking about fathers with a faith of steel. 
So what do you think we're, we're really discussing when we're talking about fathers who have a strong faith? What is that faith? I, I think for most of us, we you know we understand that that faith would just it, very simply, in a nutshell, be taking God at His word. Uh, you, you sort of get that image, that idea from uh, passages uh, in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews eleven. You know, without faith, it's impossible to please Him. You know, we must believe that He is. That is, believe certain things about God, and then. That belief in God, we understand that He's going to reward those who diligently seek Him. But I, I think a lot of times when we think about faith, it is the idea that it's just taking God at His word, but it's also connected to action and promises as well. You know, that's mm -hmm. the, at least from my mindset, that's what I feel like we're 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 discussing here. What does God say? What's my re response to it? And, and and how can I live that before others? Barry, what are your thoughts? I think also in addition to what Charles has said um, is realizing sometimes in a situation, uh, maybe I have a difficult decision to make. Maybe there's some uh, difficult things going on within my family, uh, medical issues or whatever. And it's, it's trusting in God who... We can't always physically see, and knowing that God's going to work those things out, maybe not the way I want to, but God's going to work those out, even though I don't understand how. You know, the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And, and, and that passage, I think, plays so much into what we're talking about today as far as Absolutely. Uh, being confident in God and what He says. Uh, you know, when God says something, I believe it, I'm going to do it, whatever whatever God tells me to do, that, that's what I want to do. So I think, right. you know, what we've said thus far uh, kind of uh, capsulizes uh, all that we're talking about when we think about a father uh, who has a a, uh, a faith of steel, someone who whose strength is rooted in God and what God says. Barry, I think also... Um this once again, this concept of promises that you know there, there are blessings when you follow God's word. It's not it's not just that. Here's what He says, and and He wants us to do it without any any love involved or any training or discipline or or blessing. But uh, those promises uh, are so important to us following faith. You know, faith does come by hearing and hearing God's Word. But there are blessings that are attached to that. I mean, we, we receive the blessings that God has to offer as a result of being people who, who take God at His Word uh, but, and trust, like, like Barry said. But, um, but there are blessings attached to that. Well, let me ask you this. How important do you think that fathers are uh, as far as their role within the home? Well, I think, uh, I think it's very important. Um, and I think I think about some examples uh, from uh, the book of Ephesians and the role that the father plays in leading his children, both boys and girls. Number one, I think about when Paul talks about how in Ephesians five how the husband is to treat the wife. Well, that shows those children boys or girls, how to treat a spouse. And there's, I find it interesting that there's more scriptures to husbands than there are wives. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's, not the, uh, it's not that tyrannical dictatorship. It, it, it's a team effort, but that gentleman, that father is, is the leader, not the tyrant, not the dictator, is the leader. So that means, yes, making some difficult decisions sometimes, but it also means showing my children how important it is sometimes to put my wife or my spouse above necessarily what I want. And I think that speaks volumes to the children. I also remember reading a statistic one time that said, there's greater influence of the faithfulness of a father to... God into church services, more so than the mother, into how those children attend services and how faithful they are to God. 
Tim, that's very interesting. I just read a statistic along that line. A study was done in Switzerland in 1994, uh, and they were uh, trying to see what impact a father's faith would have on the, the eventual faith of his children. And, uh, you know, the statistics were very, very alarming that if a father is not involved actively with uh, the church and is not demonstrating that leadership to his family, uh, it, it's just incredible uh, the, the negative influence that that will eventually uh, demonstrate by children who grow up and then uh, don't want anything to do with the church and, and don't attend on a regular basis. That's an excellent point. We'll be back in just a moment. Wi-Fi, audio guide, in the world switch today button, are dealing on. with a lot of struggles Double tap and hold basis. to show more controls. One Double of the tap reasons why our families are having so much difficulty is because there is a lack of leadership today found in the home in many places. God has always wanted there to be leadership in the institutions that he has designed. The home is no different. God expects men to take the leadership role in the home as he has taught them. The problem may be that many men have never heard from God's word what God expects of them. God expects the husband to be the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, according to Ephesians 5. That means that when it comes to the decision-making of the home, he is the one who ought to be in the leadership role, making sure that he is taking care of his family properly. When a father is not present in the home, you automatically have a key ingredient missing from that relationship. We need to make sure that men today are trained to grow up to be godly husbands and in turn be godly fathers because their responsibility is to bring their children up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, Ephesians 6, 4. How will we have men who will bring up their children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord if today society is right that we don't need fathers in our homes? Friends, we do. We need our men to start being men. In 1 Corinthians 15, 58, one of the things that Paul wanted the Corinthian church to do was to quit you like men. That means behave like men. In like manner, in the home today, we need men to step up and be men. Remember Abraham of old. Maybe you don't. When God decided to use him, he knew what type of man he was going to choose. He said, for I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord, to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. Look at what a man God chose. He knew that Abraham would be a proper leader to his family, that he would command his children, not just suggest things to them and then leave it up to them, but command his children in the way that they should go. And not only that, but make sure his whole household was as God would have it to be. Time and time again throughout Scripture and in society today, you can see the effects of what happens when there is not strong leadership in the home. Take Adam and Eve in the first very uh, institution of marriage where Adam was not willing to take the leadership the way that he should. When Eve partook of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, Adam did not step up in the leadership role the way he should and stop her from doing such. He should have told her that God had prohibited them from doing it and that they needed to follow him. Unfortunately, what happened? He, st he stood by and he ended up partaking along with her and sin entered into the world. What about Ahab of old? He was a king, and yet he didn't have leadership in his home the way that he needed. And look what a mess was made of his life. His wife Jezebel dictated to him how he should behave and actions that he should do. And what a mess of a life he ended up having because of such. Friends, if we are ever going to get back the way God wants things to be, we are going to have to start doing the way God has said do them. That includes with the leadership in the family. We don't need to undermine the importance of our mothers and our wives by any stretch, but we don't also need to underemphasize the importance of fathers and husbands taking the leadership role that God wants them to have. My name is Corey Barnett of the Fairview Church of Christ in Pulaski, Tennessee, and this has been a word for the family. We were talking about just a moment ago uh, the importance of fathers and how fathers have a great impact upon 
the faith of their children. And, and Charles, I think right before we were about to leave, there was a point that you wanted to, to make regarding that. I, I think based on where we are Realm Connect now. And how Valerie Jones and Avondale Church of Christ families. added new photos. Uh, Family, come join us to say goodbye to this beautiful 150-year-old oak tree. You know, as announced on Sunday, it will be removed on Thursday, Friday. We will gather at 7, 15 now, before class for an Avondale tree mendis pick attachment. Faith, but, but what we see in society does spill over into the church and into faith. But it's, and, and you're asking a great question because having faith and being a significant, significant part of that as a father, um, our children at an early age get an idea about God they even see God in a lot of ways through us and how we live and, and our faith. So it, it's crucial early on to help our children develop a, a great idea, a biblical concept about God through our faith. You know, that's interesting, uh, you know, that you said that. Uh, ironically, I just uh, recently, uh, within the, the past week, had a, a lady to contact me uh, through uh, Facebook. And uh, she had a question that she wanted to ask, and her question had to do with her perception of fathers and her perception ultimately of God because she, uh, she said, I grew up in a family in which my father was, she said, a horrible person. And, you know, he did a lot of things that, that hurt me and, and hurt my siblings. And she was really struggling with having a... Uh, a good positive uh, impression of, of God the Father. I, I'm kind of curious, what, what are your thoughts about that and, and what would you share with someone who perhaps didn't have the best father uh, growing up and, and you know they're, they're really struggling in their faith as far as the role and uh, the, uh, the rule that God the Father should have in their life? Uh, you, you know, I, you bring up a great concept, and I, I know in ministering we've all discussed with people uh, early on when I started out as a youth minister uh, in dealing with, with kids and trying to counsel with them. Uh, I've run across the same thing where, you know, you, you don't have the ideal father in the home. And as a result, that affects their faith. Uh, they, don't, they don't see God uh, in a good way. Now, the scriptures indicate, and Jesus more than any other description of God, he used that concept of the Father to describe God. But uh, I think just we just need to understand that and, and try to help people understand that even though the scenario may not be good in our personal homes, mm -hmm. uh, growing up with, a, with an abusive dad or with a, with a father that's not uh, very faithful, mm -hmm. that that's not God's desire. And he is a perfect father. And, and certainly that speaks to us to try to be more like him. Yeah, I agree, and I, I was going to make the point, too, that <clears throat> I would say to them, first of all, God is God, mm -hmm. and He is the perfect one. Uh, Charles and I uh, was recently talking about even the characters in Scripture of we read about them, and, and I'm thankful the way God placed the Bible in that we can read these uh, characters in Scripture, and we can see, even in the Hall of Faith in Hebrews chapter 11, mm -hmm. we can see some great men and women of Scripture, yet they still struggled. Mm -hmm. They were human. They made mistakes, some of them very bad mistakes, and, and yet they were able to overcome those mistakes, and they were able to continue to place their faith in God, to ask God for forgiveness and continue to look for Him. And to me, that's the example. God is the ultimate perfect Father. And our role as dads, I believe, as fathers, is to try to follow that and realize we're not perfect. But in trying to follow the perfect one, uh, that will help us along the way. Mm. We just got just maybe a, a minute or so left in this segment uh, before our discussion will be over. But I, I'd like to ask you, uh, if you could, maybe to identify someone in the scripture that stands out as being a, a good father and maybe some of the traits that this individual had that we could emulate in our own life? You know, I, I think about two just off the top of my head. Uh, naturally, uh, I think our minds would be turned to Joseph who, who raised uh, the earthly son, uh, who was God in the flesh, Jesus Christ. Um, and, but he, he just such great character and courage early on with uh, listening to God, following His voice. It, it couldn't have been easy. But you see how that faith impacted his family. Oh, yeah. I mean, 
Jesus was very submissive. Mm. He was obedient. Uh, but yet, when we when we think about it, um, he uh, he he also had a couple of brothers that right. grew up and wrote New Testament books. So yeah. that faith was important. The other one's just Noah, uh, n not just flippantly saying that, but Noah was a man of faith, and as a result, yeah. his family was saved. So he had an impact on his immediate family. Barry, what's a uh, father that comes to mind uh, that stands out? <clears throat> well, I think about Abraham, Abraham. for the same same reason mm -hmm. as, as Charles mentioned Noah, uh, because even in his old age, yes, he made some mistakes, but he always placed his faith in God. Uh, he overcome those mistakes and always placed his faith in God, and, and uh, I like his example. Well, Barry and Charles, thank you so much uh, for being with us today. Uh, I know that some of the things that we've talked about today surely are going to be a, a help in people's lives. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Barry. Brightness, screen mirroring, lock rotation, media play, previous track play, next lock, screen brightness, volume, focus, selected, music recognition, selected, screen recognition.